Before we begin, please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload new videos, and check out my backlog that will be annotated at the end. This video also contains mild spoilers for Ghosts of Tsushima. Nothing huge, but if you're trying to go in completely blind, I'd say at least get to Act 2 before watching. Ghost of Tsushima is a game I've wanted to play for years. As an Asian American, I've always loved seeing Asian culture highlighted in media, and recent years have seen very consistent, positive reception to Asian art and artists. But it wasn't always like this. Before Parasite, before Crazy Rich Asians, before Fresh Off the Boat, the portrayal of Asians and Asian culture in mainstream media were much more limited. I think Daniel Day Kim said it best. It was very notable to me when I would see an Asian face on screen when I was growing up. Uh, and it never really occurred to me how few there were until I saw one. But while traditional media has always seemed hesitant to step too far into the Far East, video games have always been more willing to jump in with both feet. Still, a lot of Asian-themed video games are either fantasy or contemporary. In contrast, Ghost of Tsushima treads its own path across feudal Japan's Tsushima Island. The events of the game are by all means fictional, but they are rooted in reality. By anchoring itself to history, the story lends a legitimate credibility to its fictional narrative. The period leading up to the game's fictitious timeline was a rather disquieting and chaotic one. The presiding Kamakura period began in 1185 and was reaffirmed in 1221 upon defeating the Emperor's Imperial military. As Japan's first military government, the Kamakura Shogunate saw great violence. Samurai families fought for land dominance, and vagrant mercenaries, the Ronin, threatened both public safety and the Shogunate's authority. Then, in 1274, Japan was invaded by the Mongols, who brought new technology and greater naval supremacy to Japanese shores, as well as a general apathy towards Japan's conventions of war. This invasion would ultimately color the direction of Japan's history from then on. And it's here, in the midst of these changes, that Ghost of Tsushima begins. The themes of the era are translated through the eyes of Jin Sakai, whose confrontations with Mongol forces spark his internal struggle to reconcile the world of yesterday, where honor in all things is paramount, and the reality of his present, where victory is impossible without change. But the game's central themes go beyond simply samurai versus invader, Japanese versus Mongol, us versus them. Jin's journey sees his preconceptions challenged by characters from all walks of life, and his internal conflict forms the heart of the game's journey. More so than mirroring the events of history, Ghost of Tsushima tries to mirror the themes of Japan's most prominent director, Akira Kurosawa, with each homage achieving varying degrees of success. In turn, this also makes Ghost of Tsushima evocative of the spaghetti westerns that were inspired by Kurosawa, as well as games like Red Dead Redemption, which were inspired by the spaghetti western. Oddly enough, Kurosawa's stylistic choices are perhaps seen the least in the game's cutscenes. Sure, the framing and pacing are good, but the positioning of characters never feels as purposeful as Seven Samurai, the shape and rhythm of a scene never as cohesive as Ikiru. Perhaps this was a purposeful decision, with Sucker Punch opting for a more modern take on Kurosawa's trademarks rather than aiming for a mere imitation of the director's design philosophy. Or perhaps this is a testament to the complexities of Kurosawa's idiosyncratic directing. Elaborate character blocking, inflated body language, stories told through movement rather than dialogue. But for a game with a filter dubbed Kurosawa Mode, it strikes me as odd that Ghost of Tsushima doesn't go all in on the director's cinematic style. No, the game's most overt and apropos parallelisms are not found in the cinematography, but rather in its themes. What I found to be the most surprising parallel between Kurosawa and Ghost of Tsushima is Rashomon. Kurosawa's Rashomon tells one story through four different points of view, with the ultimate end goal of questioning the possibility of an objective truth. One event in the eyes of four different people may result in four different truths, all potentially as true or untrue as the last and the next. 
In that same vein, Ghost of Tsushima grapples with the concept of what is right and what is wrong, as well as the inevitably nebulous nature of right and wrong in the first place. Jin sees defeating the Mongols by any means necessary as the only possible recourse. But his uncle Shimura vehemently repudiates a war without honor, desperately clinging to the samurai code, the Bushido. On the opposing end, Koton Khan sees the samurai's insistent denial of the Mongols' pursuits as wrong, with the only result being more needless bloodshed. The crossroads of these themes, of right versus wrong and old versus new, is pervasive, distilled from the narrative core all the way to the gameplay itself. From the beginning, it's established that facing the enemy head-on is the honorable way to fight. Challenging a foe to single combat to the death, striking with eyes locked rather than from behind, these are the marks of an honorable warrior. But this direct approach is shown to fail time and again against the invading force. As such, Jin must learn to become the titular ghost, to use stealth, terror, and subterfuge to subdue his foes, if only at the cost of his honor. But Ghost of Tsushima almost never forces you to play one way or the other. There are only a handful of missions and sections where Jin must be stealthy, all of which are for plot purposes. Otherwise, you are free to ride up to an enemy encampment, duel whomever approaches, and strike down all who oppose you in open combat. Of course, there are incentives to playing stealthily. Ghost skills and tools make you significantly more versatile, offering deadlier and more efficient ways to approach each challenge. The only thing stopping you from playing one way or the other is the choice you make when engaging the enemy, and your choices, by design, are meant to mirror the flow of the story. You barely have access to any ghost skills in the initial parts of the game. Most of the skills accessible to you early on follow the honorable samurai path. But the samurai way is flawed, its foundation compromised, its premise unsound. And as these inherent flaws become more exposed, Jin, in turn, unlocks more ghost skills. And it is only through these skills that place efficacy above honor that you regain more meaningful ground against the Mongol invasion, once again drawing forth the questions of right versus wrong and old versus new. And I think here is where Ghost of Tsushima's biggest potential disconnect lies for a number of players. As great as Ghost of Tsushima is, I've seen people deriding the game for glorifying the depiction of the samurai. While the game shows the samurai class as being acutely conscious of its honor and duty, historical samurai, especially during the Kamakura period, were less focused on protecting their peasant followers and more focused on obtaining power. But while I do find some merit to the arguments regarding the inaccurate portrayal of samurai, I believe the game's central themes actually go against the glorification of the samurai class. Jin's story is not one that uplifts Samurai and the Bushido. It skewers it. Time and time again, the old guard of the Samurai are depicted as ineffectual, essentially neutered by their blind indenture to the Bushido. The greatest weakness of the Samurai class is its vassalism to tradition. It is only when Jin absconds the Bushido that he finds some success. But in both the game and in reality, there were also Samurai untethered from institutions of principle. Samurai who lived only for personal glory and would do anything to obtain it. So not only is the Bushido, the soul of the Samurai class, inherently flawed even in its ideal form, the body of the Samurai class is riddled with men as deeply flawed as any other social hierarchy. Ghost of Tsushima effectively deconstructs the myth of the Samurai class by showing its fallibility, both at its apex and at its depths. And true to Kurosawa's ubiquitous obsession with the self rather than the group, the day will not be won by the samurai class. The war will either be won or lost by Jin, the individual. From high and low to Kagemusha, the importance of the individual to Kurosawa is resonant, ultimately shaping not only Kurosawa's body of work, but also those of his derivatives, from a fistful of dollars to Star Wars. Kurosawa's use of the collective was only to depict an individual's moral quandary within and without the group. Much in the same way, the individual is the driving force of Ghost of Tsushima. Not the samurai class, not the Bushido, not the invading Mongols, simply Jin Sakai. It helps that the game is incredibly fun to play, too. Standoffs are so simple yet satisfying, duels are tense and engaging, especially on the toughest difficulties. Honestly, just exploring the map is incredible. It bears mentioning that Ghost of Tsushima does not set out to reinvent the open world genre. It fully embraces open world play, flaws and all, and there were times where I fell victim to open world games fatigue. 
Its collectibles feel innumerable, scattered across its incredibly dense yet massive map, riddled with seemingly endless side quests that vary wildly in scope and quality, all of which the game has in common with its contemporaries. Some jaded players will likely see this as bloat, and I can't exactly blame them. But the action is fun no matter how you decide to play, and exploring the landscape of feudal Japan never ceases to amaze. Also, I think the game's best non-combat mechanic, and one of the game's best mechanics in general, is the Guiding Wind. In keeping with its cinematic inspirations, Ghost of Tsushima keeps its gameplay mostly free from clunky heads-up displays and mini-maps. To that end, the traditional waypoint system has been eschewed in favor of the Guiding Wind mechanic. Setting a waypoint changes the direction of the wind and wind-strown particles, which easily show you where to go without breaking the visual immersion of the game. I love this feature so much. The way it combines a mechanical need with an artistic design feels so effortless, and I want more games to do this type of thing in the future. Ghost of Tsushima has a few other quirks worth mentioning, namely the lip syncing. Mouth animations are only tailored for English dialogue, so if you want to play in Japanese, you'll have to bear with the mouths not matching the words. Honestly though, I think both languages are really great, and I actually suggest giving the English VO a shot. It might surprise you. My personal playthrough was conducted in Japanese, but my pickup shots were conducted in English, and I really only have good things to say about either dub. Tradition. Courage. Honor. They are what make us. We are the warriors of Tsushima. We are samurai! Oh! Go break their spirits. Narawashi! Ryu! Homare! Sore ga oare ra ga michi da. Oare ra koso shima no yushi. Oare ra koso mono no fuda! Dewa adachi dono. Yatsura no iki o kuji ite mairu. There are also some minor historical errors, most notably your sword. Jin uses a katana in-game, but katana were actually invented as a direct result of the Mongol invasions. Samurai during the Mongol invasions still used the tachi, a slower, heavier sword that was easier to chip and harder to repair. The katana succeeded the tachi beginning somewhere around the 14th century, being favored for its lighter weight, quicker draw, more flexible material, and overall sharpness. All the little minor gaffes aside though, I was thoroughly impressed with Ghost of Tsushima. Sure, it follows the beaten path of open world games, and at times even left me feeling a bit drained. It doesn't completely emulate the stylistic choices of the works that inspired it, and there are a few historical liberties, big and small. But there's a clear love and attentiveness to the game's creation and design that is unmistakable. This isn't just a game about being a samurai. It's a work that highlights the cultural history of Japan through the lens of fiction a work that evokes and encapsulates the themes of Japan's most renowned cinema director, and a work that showcases the international appeal of Japan, and perhaps even Asia as a whole, by underscoring the thoughtful care that American studio Sucker Punch put into its research and creation. I also think this is an important game for Asian representation. You follow Asian protagonists fighting Asian invaders in an Asian country with an Asian populace, all of which is performed by a cast that is entirely Asian or Asian biracial, for a story that is based in Asian history. I can't help but imagine how my younger self would feel and react to Ghost of Tsushima, how much of an impact the game could and would have on me. And then I imagine a young Asian American today playing Ghost of Tsushima, potentially feeling the same way that I would have perhaps even being inspired to explore their unique heritage and to reconcile the need to integrate into society with the desire to preserve their culture. If nothing more comes out of Ghost of Tsushima, I will at least be grateful for that. But what if you don't care about any of that? What if you just want a good video game? Well, Kurosawa once said something in reference to his films, which I think is also applicable to video games. Reporters always ask me what the content of my film is, and I tell them that there is no such thing. I say ordinary things. A film is not supposed to be a lecture. So even if you don't care about any of the allusions and homages throughout the game, about the historical accuracy or lack thereof, slicing dudes in duels and standoffs is still fun as hell. And in a strange way, perhaps playing the game just for fun is the most apropos Kurosawa tribute of all.